Hello everybody, Swift here again, and today I decided to do a quick little guide on uh, every single character class in the game, and also every single spell, you know, and all their weapons. So yeah, let's begin. First of all, we got the Knight, very mobile class, he can attack while moving, and he, got, he gets skill crit when he dashes. So if you do a dash attack and strike the opponent, then it's always gonna be a crit. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now for his passive... Uh, first of all, let's actually go for the trait. The trait is that he has this shield. When the animation of the shield going out happens, then you take zero damage if anything hits you at that point. So you know that there is like a small uh, timer, you know, an animation that's happening here. You take zero if opponents hit you at that point. But if you keep the shield up, which you can keep for as long as you want, and you can also dash, um, then you take only 50%? Yeah, you only take 50% of the damage. And then as you see here, his passive is the 5 weapon crits. Also, by the way, when you actually shield something, if an opponent is exactly next to you, the moment the shielding happens, a small explosion happens around you, and the opponent uh, will get every single, uh, will get vulnerable, which means that every single attack you do against them is going to be a critical for a duration. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the knight with the sword weapon. Let's also rotate over to the knight with the fabled weapon. So give me a sec to get to that. Okay, and here we're back with the knight with his fabled weapon, the pizza, pepperoni pizza. As you see, fabled weapon returns to the user, can be spinned off, skill crits when returning. So, as you see, this is the weapon itself. Now, if you go back to the footage and see how much damage the normal uh, knife attack was doing, you know, you know, the normal sword attack was doing, it was uh, about 700. Now, this thing is doing about 200, but you can throw it, nah, not really that often, but you can just stick it exactly on top of the opponent. And as you see, it does some crits, it does some damage. It does about 800 uh, maybe even more actually does about a thousand if you hit it exactly on the opponent's spot and then you can also do the dash strikes on the pizzas themselves you can do this and this like uh, however often you can actually do that you know if you if you are actually good at this which i might not be but as you see you can maintain this like if you're good enough at this you can easily maintain this and you can just start flying off with the pizzas which in my opinion is fun and all so yeah that's the fabled weapon of the uh, night let's go to the next class Okay, and the next class you see, we got the Barbarian. First of all, you already see that he has a bunch of life. Uh, the difference here being that his passive is that he gets 20% vitality. Okay, then his normal attacks is this thing, which you cannot move, but it's always a crit. So he already does a lot more damage than what the Knight was doing. 1200 here on a normal smack. You can also like do some kind of, you know, dash strike, but uh, it's not exactly what you would expect it. It's its air attack. The air attack of this is a lot different than other air attacks. Now, if you have a bunch of, you know, double jumps, you can just maintain this all the time here. As you see, I have like five or six double jumps, which is uh, pretty insane. I think I have the loud a bit, the, the noise a bit too loud, but uh, whatever, man. People uh, enjoy sound effects anyway. So yeah, that's pretty much the, the Barbarian. Now his talent is, uh, I can only use it once, so let me actually read it and then use it. Destroys every projectile. When it says lateral projectiles, it means everything. So nothing survives the thing and it freezes the enemies and it recharges after you get hit. So it looks something like this. Okay, freeze means that your net at next attack is going to be a crit and also that they are stunned pretty much. But uh, as it said, I have to get hit. You know, you have to get hit with this character to be able to use a talent again. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the Barbarian. And off we go to the next class. Uh, actually, no, the Barbarian has a fabled weapon. So let's actually go through that. Okay, and here we're back. We got the Barbarian, the, the Hephaestus Hammer, which is his unique... I guess a fabled weapon, dash attacks always skill crits, and this slows while attacking. Well, what does this weapon do? Well, this weapon actually makes you go into a permanent state of, I guess, flight or, you know, auto attacks. It does a bit less than what the other one was doing. If you go back to footage, you will see that previously I was jumping and doing this thing and it was doing like 200 damage every attack. This is doing 188. So this definitely does less damage than the general weapon. By the way, uh, I'm not uh, gaining strength or stats throughout these runs. So um, my number might obviously be bigger than yours but i'm just comparing weapons you know without changing my stats so this weapon does not do that much but it attacks pretty often and also if you like dash through opponents which you can do even in the air it's always gonna be a crit and it's gonna increase the damage but it's still not gonna be as much as it was previously with the other weapon and you know what i'm also gonna reduce a bit the sound effects here because it seems a bit too loud to me so yeah let's uh, let's go to the next class though so here we are with the mage now, uh, the mage passive, first of all, is Siphon, this thing here, which says that our weapons apply mana leech, which is this thing. So every time I attack something, it gets this blue flame, or you attack something and you start draining mana. Uh, the weapon itself is a ranged weapon that just uh, smashes the opponent. As you see, about 400 damage on average, pretty decent. 
And uh, also, it seems like, you know, there is also the projectile itself that does the damage, right? So, uh, it does a lot of damage in general. And, uh, yeah, it seems like the wand also does damage. So, the projectile itself does damage, the explosion does damage, and the wand also does damage. That's why you see double the numbers whenever I attack. Now, his talent is that he gains another spell. So, for example, now I rolled this spell for, for this specific mage. And, uh, yeah, his, uh, his skill crit is if you do a spell that costs more than 50 mana, as you can see here, you gain charged, and charged is pretty much how you get the skill crits for free. So, uh, that's pretty much the character. As you see here, I'm regaining, like, mana 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 every time I mana drain. And, uh, yeah, I also want to point out here that uh, it is a lady, and uh, she has bird, so I'm beard, so I really enjoy the fact that the mages can have that. I'm not sure if the rest of the classes can have that, but she, on top of everything else, also has beard, so that's that's really fun. Um, and, yeah, I mean, all the classes can be both, um, uh, yeah, both can be a man or a woman. So it's just fun that he has a beard. Anyway, uh, she has a beard. Anyway, uh, let's go to the fabled weapon of the mage here, because uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's next up. And here we've got our next mage with the fabled weapon. Uh, first thing you can see, it already has like a, a particle effect that's awesome. By the way, it didn't change the sound, uh, which is awesome, but doesn't really matter. But still, it has its particle effect. And what this weapon does is obviously over here, fabled weapon, first strike skill crits on high enemies and the second one on low health enemies. As far as I understand, high health enemies is more than half life, half life and low health enemies is less than half life. So uh, this is what it looks like. Looks like a slice. Obviously, we still maintain this the the fact that we're a mage. Therefore, we do still uh, leech, you know, because that is an effect that the mage applies. The mana leech, not the weapon. And uh, yeah, I mean, that is it. As you see, I can only skill crit the first attack here because Totem is supposed to have for life all the time. Lady Quinn over here. But uh, if you're fighting an opponent, if the first strike crits and uh, brings them down to less than half health, then the second strike is also going to crit and pretty much kill him because, I mean, if the first crit made him lose half its life, then the second crit is obviously also going to do the same thing and kill the enemy and uh, yeah that, that is pretty much the mage now you can also fly with this weapon like i'm not jumping i'm just spamming the weapon attack and as you see i'm not even moving uh, an inch so that means you can use the mage in axis mundi to just pass through the whole area if you enjoy that but uh, yeah that's pretty much the main fable weapon mage simple fable weapon time to go to the next character class and we go to our next class, which is the Assassin. In my opinion, the most fun and most powerful class. I mean, maybe not most powerful, but definitely most fun. I really enjoy the Assassin. Uh, the Assassin has this attack as his main attack. This is the, a simple triple attack, as you can see. And, um, I mean, you have a bunch of mobility. You you are allowed to move while attacking with this. It's not like, you know, a few other classes that we're going to definitely see later. And uh, he does skill crit for free on his last attack. Uh, that is what his attack does. His passive is that he has 10% super crit chance. That means if you do a crit, then you have a 10% chance to do a super crit uh, on top of whatever other chances you already had. This is really powerful, by the way, because you can easily just spam attacks and get free crits. Uh, that's why it's good. And a bunch of passives and stuff have to do with critting. So in general, it's really good to crit for free with this class. Now, his talent uh, is that he goes invisible. Uh, which is literally damage immunity. And then the first opponent that you hit, I wasn't fast enough, let me reset this. By the way, every third attack resets his talent, as you see. The first two attacks do not reset his talent. Only the third one does. I'm sorry, I was not able to showcase it. And now, as you see, the opponent has this debuff. This debuff, what it does, as you see, sometimes I'm not actually critting. And as you see, the cooldown is not going down as long as I'm not hitting my third attack. While if I do hit my third attack, the cooldown will go down. But uh, yeah, what the passive, the weakness does, if he is weakened, all my attacks are crits. As you see, all my attacks are crits. And then that, on top of that, you know, I can also do super crits. And as you see, the duration of how long the opponent is weakened is almost the same with being invisible again if you spam attacks. So you can really DPS opponents down very quickly with this. So I I really enjoy the assassin for that and um, yeah i mean that's pretty much the assassin he doesn't have a fabled weapon so i guess we go to the next one. Oh, and something else that is not mentioned before i go um uh, the fact that you can also do dash attack crits with the assassin like you if you want to see if something is a crit you have to see the blades and as you see the blades are white white and then yellow but if i do a dash attack then all of them become yellow which means all of them are crits i don't know why it doesn't mention anywhere but uh, it is true like dash attacks are with this character also always crits and uh, yeah i think that's the assassin off to the next class 
And here we got our uh, Valkyrie, which uh, one of the cheese classes. Now she starts with Halberd. The Halberd, as uh, some other weapons, is a dash attack for crit. Uh, you can also do that in the air, you know. You can also dash attack in the air and do a crit. But the main unique aspect of this weapon is that you can attack straight up down and also straight up up. So instead of doing this, instead of doing spin jumps, you can just do normally uh, normal strikes, you know, on the ground. Or you can even, uh, like, dash and hit downwards or something like that, you know. You can just do this, a drive-by or a below drive-by. Like, uh, you can do a bunch of things here, which is really good. This is, this is like, one of the cheesy classes where you attack opponents below ground while they don't even have any chance of actually attacking you, which is really nice. Uh, now, her passive is that she gains magic crit chance and magic crit damage. She's supposed to be a semi-magician, although she doesn't really do anything magical. And then, also, she her talents is deflect, destroy all mid-sized projectiles, which are most projectiles, but not all of them, and uh, restore mana if you hit them. And also, you get it for free back, so this looks like this. I obviously did not hit any projectile, but if I would hit a projectile with this thing, and as you see, the range is pretty huge, it doesn't need to be literally here, it can also be around here, because as you see, in this distance, I am hitting Lady Queen with the spell, so if she was a projectile, I would instantly gain the spell back, and I could just use it again, and again, and again, like if bullet tail is happening, you just spam this thing, and more bullets come in, you press it again, again, it has, it doesn't even have like a 0 0.5 cooldown or something, it just goes straight up, a 0 cooldown, you just press it a manual times, and you're pretty much damage immune, really good against the uh uh, what is he called? Uh, really against a bunch of against the boss of bosses, uh, bosses. Any boss that has any type of projectile, you just press this and you take no damage. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the Valkyrie. Uh, she also has no fabled weapon. So off to the next one. And next class is the Archer. Now the Archer, as always, a very simple class. He just shoots the arrows, you know? He does a bunch of damage, as you see. He does 833, which is most more than a bunch of classes than that we saw. And uh, his trait, I guess, is uh, this thing, the canopy. The canopy does a bunch of things at the same time. First of all, it poisons opponents when you attack them. And also every single projectile that comes from any corner that touches anything on the canopy is instantly disintegrated and gets destroyed. You know, let me actually read it too. Here creates a canopy. Mid-sized projectiles, so maybe not the huge ones, but most of the projectiles will get countered by the canopy. And also you get the explosion. And then how you get skill crits, by the way, his passive is 10 strength and 10 dex, which is really good because strength is damage and dex is crit damage and crit chance and stuff, so really good. And then uh, how you get the skill crit is if you do the perfect timing, which is about the second, I would say. You also see the arrow become like yellow if you actually hit the timing correct. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the archer. I'm not sure if it's better to just spam attacks uh, and hope for the random crit instead of trying to go for the perfect crit on your own all the time, but that's on you. And as I said, you also have the canopy, which uh, provides you with poison, but only if you are standing on it. If I do this, I do not poison things, but if I do this, I do poison things, and then they explode. Uh, in general, the idea with this character is to just go as high as possible and set up a canopy very, very high. Because if you have a canopy up here, then every opponent that is from this line and downward, like from this line and downward, is most likely going to hit the canopy while he's trying to attack you, and therefore you will straight up not get the hit. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the archer. So off to his fabled weapon, and uh, yeah, let's just go to fabled weapon. And here we've got our fabled weapon of the archer, which is the handle held ballista. This thing can only be far from the ground, so you can no longer jump, and also you cannot do anything, like it forces you to stay on the ground. So right now I cannot even use the weapon, I'm trying, I'm clicking, it's not happening. And uh, if I target, right now I'm not allowed to dash, I'm not allowed to jump. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna spam now dash and jumps to see, it, so that you understand when you can actually do it. I mean, look at this. Come on here like i'm gonna take an attack and here you see there is a very big delay i'm super spamming but as you see it has a very big delay from when you shoot but the trade-off is that you do a thousand five hundred damage which is a lot more than the rest and crits are like two thousand so if you actually are able to get the skill crit yeah which takes a while but it's like an insta kill on most of the things and uh yeah that's pretty much the failed weapon and also you can obviously also set up like the canopy up here and be like i'm a ballista archer from the sky hi you know it's it's a fun class uh, it's very fun to literally whatever you see you're like whoop dead whoop dead whoop dead it's a fun class but i i would not suggest it for anybody that does not know enemy patterns because if a dagger sword is for example coming up to you you're not gonna be fast enough to snipe it maybe you will maybe it's gonna dodge you and it's gonna hit you or a mage or something anyway that is the ballista archer still pretty fun class in my opinion and uh yeah off to the next one and the next class is the duelist 
uh, a simple class, but in my opinion, one of the better ones. Now, first of all, his passive is that he gets a charge, which is a skill crit after he uses his, um, you know, talent. And uh, yeah, I mean, whenever you use a talent, which is this uh, door draw here, you gain a free crit. That is his passive, pretty much. And now, as you see, the weapon might not be that high, and he's also not attacking that fast. But uh, first of all, dash attacks are always crit. So he has the same aspect like the other warriors. And he is also good at air attacks. In general, he's really good at doing this thing all the time. Like all the time jumping and attacking because he has a pretty fast attack. And then there is like also another small little trick here that if you attack and keep the button pressed of the attack, like I'm, press I'm, I'm pressing the button and I'm keeping it. You see that on its own, the game decides to attack while you put on the ground, like when your feet touch the ground. So you can do like a little trick that's like this. So if exactly before you fall, you just do a free double attack. It just happens like, boop, boop, you know, boop, boop. and that is actually good because that means that you can just spam attacks all the time and also jump all the time. And even if you like, even if you touch the ground, you still don't have a problem. While most other classes, uh, if you if you attack on the air and attack on the ground is not the same thing, specifically like for the barbarian something. But this class is in general very mobile and uh, very powerful, at least in my opinion. Also, something else really to keep in mind is that the roll has a 2 second cooldown and it's damage immunity. And not only does it have a 2 second cooldown as damage immunity, but also you can roll and dash at the same time. So you can like put inside your dash a little bit of a, a little of, um, I mean, a little bit of damage immunity. Like you can do something like this. It won't last that long, but it's gonna last that long so you avoid, you know, a, an enemy attacking you, something like that. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the duelist. He doesn't really have anything else to show. So um, yeah, I think that's it. Off to the next class. And the next class is the Cook. Now, the Cook is a bit more unique than the rest. First of all, his passive is that all his attacks apply burn. So if I do just do this, as you see, my normal attack just applies burn to whatever I actually hit. The burn itself has its own mechanics, which is like it does a bit of damage in the beginning and then it skill crits at the end. Now, the weapon itself has also a mechanic. That is that it strikes projectiles and reflects them into fireballs. So the fireballs look about like this. And then your next attack can also crit. I'm going to go into a dungeon real quick to showcase it. But before we do that, I want to also mention the talent. The talent heals you. So this is what it looks like. You just heal mid-flight. Doesn't really matter where you are. Obviously, this is not going to go back to today, but it doesn't matter. And um, yeah, if you collect healing drops or, or, you know, if you collect food is what this means. Or if you collect mana potions, if you have the talent that says uh, that you reset your your trait whenever you drink a mana potion i think that's a meta progression item or i don't remember where exactly you get that but it doesn't matter there is also a chance to reset with mana potions your ability so um yeah that's pretty much the cook let me go into a dungeon just to showcase showcase how it looks to um to hit a flying projectile just just to showcase you know Okay, and here I am in a dungeon in a perfect position to showcase how exactly it works. So we have an eye behind us. As you see, the eye from below us, which is not visible, but it doesn't matter, like, it's down there. Uh, whenever it shoots a projectile, it can just boop. And as you see, I get the free crit above us, which means that if I then go ahead and hit anything, it's gonna instantly get crit, because uh, that's literally how it works. You see, that was that was a super crit, by the way, but still, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I showcased the damage already in the beginning area. So, yeah, let's maybe find another opponent that maybe has something range. This guy does not. That's a... Uh... Ah, here, here we go. There is a Doom Vessel though here, but come on. Shoot, shoot an arrow to me. I wasn't good enough at that. Let's try maybe again. Uh, although, I don't think it really matters. You know what? Let's get rid of this guy. I mean, I don't need to have him here. Like, let's assume that this guy is trying to attack us. You see, I got it. I mean, you have to get the timing good, uh, perfectly. But if you do get the timing, theoretically, I could try to throw the fireball on top of the Doom bus there. You see, I just did it. So, yeah, I think that's enough with this character. And uh, let's actually go to his uh, fabled weapon. And here we got the Cook's fabled weapon, which is uh, the Bag of Spoons. Uh, bounces once after bouncing it's a skill crit that scales within this is what the web normally looks like like you can throw it wherever as you see it becomes golden after it hits something so normal attack if i don't crit 600 damage about 600 damage crit attack uh, I mean, that was not a bounce. Here we go, a bounce, a thousand something. But uh, you have to be able to, you know, hit the bounces. And it itself also bounces. So as you see, if I'm hitting like Lady Quinn, she also bounces on my own attack off. Uh, I'm not sure if, yeah, you cannot do a double bounce though. As you see, if the one bounce hits something else, then the it stops bouncing. Like it's, the first one is normal damage, the second one is skill crit, and then there is no third one. 
So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the character. I don't really enjoy this, but I, I like this specific character. I don't find it really that fun. But uh, it is fun to apply burn to a bunch of opponents from afar. Like, you're just spamming this thing and just get hits in. Uh, but otherwise, like, the character isn't really something to write home about. At least, not in, at least not in my mind, you know? At least not in my mind. And, um, yeah, once again, the burn is applied by the cook itself. So uh, that means that if you later in the run find like another weapon while you have the cook, for example, if you find the assassin daggers or any other weapon really, you will also apply burn with whatever other weapon you have found. So um, yeah, I think that's going to be it with her cook. Off to the next class. In next class, the boxer. As you see, very quick punches. Let's first begin with the passive. So his passive is that he is elusive and ca can walk through most enemies. So that means that he just does not get contact damage. Or at least that's what I understand with this. Or at least that's what I've seen. But a few opponents will actually hit you. As far as I understand, like slugs and stuff are going to definitely hit you. And uh, yeah, anything that is an opponent that actually does most of their damage through contact damage are going to hit you. Uh, now, his weapon is the Boxing Gloves, which has a free combo multiplier. Now, what combo is, is this buff that you get above you. As you see, I'm now having a 15 combo, and after 15 combo, all of your attacks become skill crits. Like, as long as I maintain this buff, every single one of my attacks is a skill crit. Also, the attack speed is insanely fast, so that you can amass it. You know, everything is part of this thing. And then he also can do an uppercut, which is like an attack that has a bit more range and also sends opponents flying. This also builds up combo, not two at a time. I'm just gaining two because I'm hitting this thing up here and uh, yeah that's pretty much the weapon itself you cannot dash attack you cannot pretty much do anything you can do a dash uppercut though which is pretty decent and you can also fly like as long as you're fighting opponents you can fly over here i'm not gonna fly because i'm not hitting anything but if you are hitting something you will be flying forever pretty much now his talent is this punch which does a bunch of damage as you saw it did like a thousand plus and it consumes all the combo stacks. So for example, if I try this again, let's say without a combo stack, by the way, it refreshes just by three hits. It's gonna do, oh, a 106, uh, 160, which is almost nothing. But if I have 30 combo stacks, how much is it gonna do? 1,000 plus, I would assume. Yeah, 100 plus 1,000, I think. Doesn't really matter. You can go and see the number again if you go, want to go ahead. These are his damage numbers. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, the punch, this punch here, the um, the this, this thing, sends opponents flying and also destroys projectiles which also is not shown anywhere but it does like you can target this and you can send opponents flying and they're gonna like just fly off to the other side of the universe and also all the projectiles around you are instantly gonna get popped uh, it does it but it doesn't show it anywhere i don't know why it isn't written but it's true so uh, yeah that's it for this character i'm gonna go to the next boxer now because the boxer also has a fabled weapon here we got our Shadow Boxer, or I guess our Explosive Boxer, or whatever, and Kill the Gauntlets is the weapon, as a fabled weapon. It throws out an explosive attack, and after a short distance, it's a skill crit, and it can also hit us. So this is what it looks like. Okay, this is what it looks like when you're attacking somebody. You know, this is what it looks like when you're not good at this. Literally, you're too close to an opponent, you will get hit. You know, watch out for that. Damage immunity window also protects us. And then this is the non-skill crit version. If I'm over here, I can just shoot over a skill crit version. The distance is um, is pretty big. You have to be almost off screen to hit it. And yeah, here here for example, where it's borderline off screen, I do hit it, but here I still don't. Like it has to be borderline. Uh, yeah, it's almost off screen. So yeah, that, that's pretty much the weapon. Pretty dangerous weapon, but it has a very high attack speed and also does a bunch of damage. Like 700 damage is as much damage as the knight was doing, which the knight's damage is considered pretty decent. So with this attack speed I'm shooting and also the fact that it's AoE, it makes sense that it has a downside that also hits you because otherwise you would just be like, whoa, just yoloing in. But no, that, that's not allowed to be happening. So this is what this weapon looks like. I really enjoy this class in general. You do lose the ability of doing an uppercut and you also don't gain um, combo anymore because combo was getting gained by the punches themselves the weapon was providing the combo not the class the class only provides the fact that you don't get hit by a few um you know contact damage opponents which isn't really good with the punches by the way like if an opponent is here and you don't take contact damage like i don't take contact damage from lady quinn you can't really punch him <laughs> you can only do this and then just fly away and try to reverse hit them but uh, yeah that's pretty much the bomb boxer i guess and uh, off to the next class the next class is the Dragon Lancer. Now, this class is one of those classes that I don't really enjoy. His attack is this thing, 
which as you see does less damage than what the knight does which is already a dead giveaway that it's not a nice class at least for me uh you cannot move while doing this you can't sh you can't even jump you're completely locked in you can dash though but it doesn't trap the attack so you either try to dash and miss the attack or you hit and instantly dash which would be the perfect thing right you can do this and then run if you're good at this now he also has a charge attack this weapon has a charge attack first of all his passive is that he gains 20 armor which makes the armor a lot higher than it was for the other characters which is good because it makes him very defensive and then as i said his flying attack is this thing oh boom hits for a thousand two hundred i mean it's pretty decent damage and you can charge it pretty often like you can just spam it all the time just spam 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 all the time try to do this which is in my opinion better than doing this thing but uh, still you might get hit by an opponent but the good thing is that you can just fly away you can change where you want to fly to and it doesn't matter if you slowly drop because at the end of the day you can just do this again and again and again another character that can very easily just pass throughout the whole axis mundi this is not my meta progression making me fly this is literally how the character works you can just fly all the time and whatever is in your path just gets hit and the moment you see you hit something you're like okay time to go Whee! or maybe time to go back and you can also do like a huge explosion as you see when you do the strike it hits everything behind it as you see i am hitting lady queen without even being remotely close to her come on come on from below maybe it's easier yeah from below it's easier like you can just hit opponents from afar without even being close to them so uh, this is very nice but still i think the character is a bit too clunky now his talent here is um a bastion that destroys large projectiles large projectiles means everything if something says large projectiles it means literally everything is blocked pushes enemies back recharges on hit this is what it looks like if you go close to an opponent just does a smidge of damage and pushes them back not obviously possible with lady quinn and whenever you attack you refresh it uh, although you don't refresh it faster if you do the charge attack like that's not a thing but still the spell is pretty decent but there are better ones in my opinion the talent actually because it looks like a spell but it's actually a talent and uh, yeah that's pretty much the dragon answer i hope you guys enjoy this class too because i definitely don't and uh, yeah the air attack is by the way very bad like the normal air attack as you see it's it, it it locks you into place you you can't really double jump in the air you are supposed to dash like it's not really a good one but this thing this thing is pretty decent like it has a big aoe it also hits everything behind it is easy to channel and spam all the time so it has its upside and its downside and uh yeah off to the next class and the next class is the Gunslinger, which is another ranged class, which in my opinion you should use a mouse and keyboard to use, but whatever. Now the Gunslinger, first of all, the passive is that he is suave, which means that you straight up do intelligence damage with your weapon, which is pretty decent by the way, like if you build into intelligence and in general uh, have intelligence that high, you just straight up gain free damage. So this character, for example, if he had the sword that the knight has, or for the example, the assassin dagger, then he would do more damage than the assassin does, or the knight, because those classes don't actually get damage, they get crit chance and stuff. Uh, now, the weapon itself is this thing, which attacks pretty fast and very often. Like, if you see the damage, it's, like, insane how fast and often it attacks. And the last eight shots are always crits. Now, we are not in the last eight shots. Up here, you can see, not a crit. And now, from here on out, every single bullet is gonna be golden, and it's always gonna be a crit. You can also see it over here if I do it normal bullets gold bullets and also the reload is dependent on for people that spam reload all the time and they shoot you know the reload is dependent on how many bullets you have like i miss one this is the reload time if i miss all of them what's the reload time gonna be this one Ooh. now this is also another class that can fly okay and you can also continue shooting when uh, the gun is empty. Now that does not make sense if you're on the ground, right? You can just do this, ha 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 ha. But you can do this in the air just to maintain your, uh, you know, flight all the time. You can do like this, and then whoops, I'm flying. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So that's pretty much the class. Now for the talent ability, it's this thing. It just pops a bomb. It explodes pretty fast. Doesn't really do something crazy. The only upside of specifically this uh, the trait is that it destroys projectiles, and also that you get them both back at the same time. Like when you throw up the first one. It already cools them down both. Like if I do, for example, bomb plus bomb, as you see, it's an eight second cooldown. But if I do bomb and then wait, 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 and then pop another one, it's gonna already be ready both of them. Like I do bomb, I wait, 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 wait. Let's say three, two, one, boop, pop another bomb. And as you see, four seconds cooldown. So if you time this even better, you can always like use the one of the two and then just have your fun, do your damage. And then, uh, you know, if you have some kind of trick to calculate how long the cooldown is, you can just get the bomb done and then sh shoot another one. And as I said, as I said, Said it destroys mid-sized projectiles which does not really mean that much you have to know what is mid and what is uh, huge so uh, yeah just you just learn with experience anyway that is the class so off to the next one the next class is the ronin another very favorite of mine and also a lot of other people 
Now the Ronin, first of all, is passive, 20% more strength, that means you straight up do more damage. And uh, then you also got the katana as a weapon. So uh, this is his normal damage. Oops, crit. Yeah, 788, almost 900, eight, almost 800. And you do a skill crit when you attack from afar, which is about this distance. You can be just a smidge more away. I mean, not actually a smidge, but like this, this, and this, like this distance in general are crits. Now there is also another upside of this we class weapon, I guess, whatever you want to call it, uh, is this thing that it can attack sideways and from below. And look how far away I am, and I'm still striking over there. Like, do you see how far away I am? This is a full on cheese class like you are supposed to be like jumping around and just staying away from the opponents you never should actually be on the ground and attack because if you're attacking from the ground first of all you're not allowed to jump as you see i cannot jump i'm spamming jump it doesn't happen you can dash yes but you cannot do a dash attack i'm trying to attack it does not allow me but if you attack and like or try to attack and dash this is maybe the best thing you can do but in the air you can just do whatever like you can easily strike and move it does allow you to do this in the air literally the same attack but in the air as you see i am allowed to attack and move so you it's another one of those classes where you're supposed to be in the air most of the time and just spam from afar now, his ta trait is this thing, Kotetsu. As you saw, I did like 355 damage. It isn't that much. It doesn't do that crazy things. But first of all, it allows you to just avoid the fight completely if you want. Second thing that it allows you to is if there are like a bunch of opponents in front of you, you can just do this and just go through the other side in case you just want to pass through points and attack them. And the most important part is that defeating enemies with this talent resets his cooldown. Now, I'm not able to show it right here, but it is literally what it says. Like, if there is an opponent here that has 100 life, you're like, boom, and then you do another jump and then you're like over here you know you can do like boom 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 you can just just have fun in general that's not gonna happen that often maybe if you play with keyboard mouse you can like target everything correctly and be like blink 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 and like you go around and everything dies but normally most of the time you just use it as a little flex just so that you feel more awesome which is always awesome like doing this and an opponent dying and then you get the cooldown back and then you try it again on another opponent it's always fun you do most of the time what you do is you strike one uh, they go down to about this uh, size, you know, when they go down to one fourth, fourth of their life, you do like this and then this. That's most of the time how you kill most opponents with this class. And I think it's pretty fun. I think it's one of the better classes once again. Also, having a bunch of range is really good in general. Like, sometimes you want to avoid getting hit uh, for very important reasons like a curse. Or sometimes you have flight. Like, there is a relic that allows you to fly, so uh, it's very good with this class. You just fly all the time and uh, strike from afar. It's as if you're doing this thing, although now I'm doing it with double jumps because I have about a bunch of double jumps, but it's really good in general. I really enjoy this class, and uh, yeah, off to the next one. Next class is the Pirate. Now, the Pirate is a pretty new class. Uh, I don't really enjoy it, but let's go through it. First of all, the passive is 10% weapon and crit spell damage. That means you are supposed to do as many crits as possible. And the crits are also easy to achieve. It's just a simple dash attack. Very simple. Now, the normal attack is obviously not that powerful. 600 damage isn't that crazy. But uh, 800 crit damage is also not that crazy, but whatever. The little thing that this weapon has, though, you know, the cannonball, this, this weapon, is that you can keep it hold to, uh, you know, fire a cannon, which looks like this. And it does a bit more damage. And then if you also combine that with dashing, you know, or even backwards, dashing like you can do this you can for example do as i said this thing you can also get a, a few more crits like that which in my opinion is always fun and what you do most of the time with this class is you smack an opponent and then just cannonball them too like you do this and then you do that uh, because until you are done with the dash the cannonball will be pretty much ready because it doesn't take that much and also by just keeping down the button the game does allow you to do that like the game does allow you to attack dash and then the bomb is ready like this boom done it's very simple to do it's just a dash literally after you hit an opponent and just smack them down with the bomb it is a good combo now the talent is this thing it's the little ship which I think is really insanely and also really fun. And you can just do this and all the time attack, attack, attack. And after a duration, it just flies off and explodes for a bit of damage. It's not really something crazy, I would say. But still, it's a fun little thing. Now, you can also use the talent again. Like, you, you're not, you, don't, you don't need to wait for this. You can just use the talent again and just flies the ship off right away on its own. So, in my opinion, one of the more fun talents. Not that it's something good. Obviously, it's not really something crazy. And you can also park the ship, by the way. Like, you can just leave it there, strike the opponents and it's also gonna fly on its own on top of the opponents which i think is the most unique aspect of this whole thing that you can just 
put it up somewhere and just fly away, go fight another opponent or just attack the same opponent from a different side and then command the ship to go off and attack them. And I think that's also very unique. By the way, something I did mention, you can still board the ship again. Like you can do 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 then you do this, so this guy is dead. And then you're like, hop, off we fly and then fly my ship. You know, you can do a bunch of things. Really fun class, but I don't think it's a good one. Now, uh, if you think it's a good one, then power to you, man. Anyway, that's going to be it for the pirate. Also, no fabled weapon for this one. Off to the next class. Whoops, off to the next class. <laughs> and the next class is the bard. So, the bard shoots out these projectiles, which, uh, if you go to the description, is a spin kick knows to detonate them. Actually, let me explain the class first of all. His passive is that when he does spin kicks, he gets a buff that makes him do 15 more damage. This looks something like this. As you see above him, he has, like, a few steps. Now, these steps is the buff. As you see, 500 damage step. Like, look at this. 200, 300, 400, 400 actually, 500 with combo, 500 with other crit, you know, which is really powerful. Now, his weapon is this thing, which uh, is like a little dot, which is like it does joke numbers, but after a while, it, it becomes a crit on its own. It just randomly, not randomly, after a duration, it does its thing. You can have up to three of these active. After that, they disappear. But the main aspect is that you can jump on these and they do like a little explosion. Uh, and that's how you're supposed to play the class. Like, supposedly, you you should shoot these onto opponents or close to opponents and then you just should like jump on them and because they get when they get the crit effect like when they become golden all of your attacks on that gold note is also gonna be like a crit and as you see the range that they explode are pretty huge like i'm i'm jumping up here and the opponents are still getting hit down there so uh yeah, that's pretty much the class now where uh, the talent as you see they do change into each other and in general it doesn't combo like you cannot hit three or four opponents uh, not three or four opponents you cannot attack the, the same opponent with five or six explosions at the same time like oh it does no it does not it does not as you see i am actually trying to hit both notes at the same time with my spin jump but it only hits them once and also something else i want to mention right away is uh, that his talent i mean the last thing i did mention the talent is a shout covering mid-sized projectiles into notes so when you press it i'm gonna press it here it's this thing everything around you like everything becomes this note like if for example madness is happening if bullet hell is happening you just press this button and everything around you, you know what let me actually go into dungeon and showcase what it looks like you know l let me actually do that real quick actually i'm gonna cut here and uh, just show you when i get to the dungeon Okay, I'm back. Uh, now, this is not gonna be bullet hell, but at least I'm gonna, you know, showcase exactly what I tried to showcase. Now, this guy is gonna also throw out projectiles because that... Oh, no, it's not a super... Well, it doesn't matter. This guy shoots four projectiles, so I can do it with him. What he's gonna do, like, boop! You see, everything is now a note, and I can also jump on these, and they will also become golden like my normal attack does. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the class. I didn't even realize there were specs on the ground, but doesn't matter. That is pretty much the class, so off to his fabled weapon, because, yep, the Bart has actually fabled weapon. And here we are back on the bard with the kinetic weapon, which is the electric guitar, which is this thing. Okay, now this thing says that, first of all, when you do a jump strike, when you do this thing, it gives you a crit right away. Uh, it is part of the weapon, as you see here. Gaining kinetic energy also grants charged, uh, actually spin kicks to gain kinetic energy which gives you charge and kinetic energy is what you need to use the weapon as you see it has like a, a counter up here if i use it once then i cannot use it again i need to jump strike something to get the counter up now this does not stack you cannot gain more but in my opinion this weapon is a lot better because you can do like this which uh, does a lot more damage like you can get like a hit crit hit crit hit crit it's a lot better especially when you start amassing you know the the jump strike damage look at this you can be afar hitting something random and you can just do insane damage from afar like you just need to find something to hit and this is very very strong on boss fights because boss fights don't really care most of the time that you jump strike on them so you can just literally be above a boss strike boss and just destroy him with your uh, jump strikes but if you don't have the buff stacked up it's only like a thousand i mean it's still a lot like a thousand five hundred is as much damage as the ballista was doing a thousand six hundred was the ballista and this guy is just so mobile and also range like you can do like this or whatever you want to do whoop boom you see very simple i really love this class this this class is better in my opinion than the other bard the bard with the notes but uh yeah electric guitar for the win anyway that is it and let's go off to the last class pretty much and here we are at the last class of the astronomer now, the Astronomer is a new class uh, alongside the Pirate. Uh, passive has more intelligence, so for intelligence-related builds or spell builds in general. And also, every single damage you do generates mana. Now, I'm gonna explain the weapon right away. It creates a black hole, which is this thing. Okay, and you can have only one of these active. Like, the moment you try to create another one, you just straight up 
um, delete the last one. Now, when you try to create a black hole, just so you know, there is like a time at which you can change the where it's gonna land, and also you can create it in like dash, and it's gonna just pull it back with you. Like, uh, th there is a, a little bit of a delay of when it gets cast, so watch out for that. Now, the black hole itself, if an opponent is at the side of it, they don't actually get crit, they just get damaged. The other ones are random crits. And if it is in the middle, then they only get crits. Like, as long as an opponent is in the middle, it is a guaranteed crit on them. I don't think it does that much damage, specifically compared to other classes we have seen. But uh, it does easily stack up po po potion stacks, poison stacks, and crits, and um, what else does it stack up easily? Combo stacks, like, this class can easily stack up things that stack up. As simple as that. Now, the talent is this thing, which is pretty much, it does a bit of damage here and there. Oh, by the way, when the black hole hits something, you gain mana. Do you see that? I'm gaining mana. Yeah, that, that, is, uh, that is what the passive does. Like, uh, every single thing that has a bunch of attacks gives you a bunch of mana. And yeah, as I said, the talent gives you flight and damage immunity and also has like a 5 second cooldown or something, 6 second cooldown, which is pretty decent, like he has a pretty decent talent. But the class itself, I don't know, it's a, it's a bit weird when, when you have to protect you from one side, like if you're surrounded you will have a problem other than jumping in the middle of your black hole, I guess, that would still not protect you because opponents just throw projectiles at you. But uh, still, this is uh, pretty much the last class. Uh, let's go through the spells real quick and at that point we will be done with uh, this video. And here we got our first spell. Now I will be using the mage just because his talent is a spell, so I go through them faster. Now, uh, first spell of the mage is... Actually, not the mage, for whatever class. Uh, the fireball. You know, we have the fireball. This is literally the first thing you start with. It's just a big explosion. And then on top of that also does burn damage. Now you can see the damage numbers because I will always be playing a mage. So the damage numbers will be based on the same stats. So burn... Man, it's decent. By the way, don't think that these are doing a lot less than what my normal attacks are doing. You have to realize that I have a strength-related set, so my strength is like 300-something, while my intelligence is 160. So, uh, you can just... You should only compare them based to each other. You should not compare them in general with the normal attack damage that you do, you know? Uh, that's pretty much the first spell. Just a fireball does damage. It's pretty good for layering off, appealing off layers of defense that opponents might have. There are a few opponents that have, like, elites or even to ball fight. The fireball is really good against a to ball fight when he's spawning his um, little machines, you know, the daggers and the shields and whatever, uh, you can peel off their defenses with just one fireball and they just die. Uh, next off, second spell, this thing, the shockwave. Blast enemies away with audible sound. This thing pushes opponents back a lot, but the more important part is that if it hits anything, it destroys large projectiles. So as you see, anything that is in the area of effect, like everything that the shields that get moved means that they got hit by the shockwave, and that means that if they were a projectile, they would actually get destroyed. Is that up there getting hit? I wasn't fast to see. That's actually from above. Yeah, that does get hit if you're close enough. Uh, so yeah, like this is also a pretty decent spell. Not really that good. There are better ones than this one. But uh, if you're fighting like a boss fight, once again, when you see the boss fight is about to do some projectiles or some weird stuff, you just throw it at him. And if this, for example, is the boss, every projectile around the boss is gonna get destroyed, and you being close to the boss is also gonna make it so you will not get hit. So if a projectile is, for example, here about to hit you, you throw the spell, and the spell uh, from behind makes the projectile disappear. A really versatile spell, but not really one of the better ones. Anyway, uh, off to the next spells. I started with um, flames, your fire spells, might as well continue with fire spells. So, first spell we got here is this one. This is just a channeling spell that after the duration starts critting. This is how it works. You know, tog level and a skill crits after a few seconds. And the same thing goes with flame barrier. Both of these are tog level skills that crit after a few seconds. So, this is what the one looks like. Very simple. It's pretty much channeling forever and now the flames are golden. And then the second one is this one, which is also pretty simple. Just does a bunch of damage, 96, 96, 96, and then at some point the flames become golden and now they're only crits, you know. Uh, I, I like this really a lot with specific characters. I think this is really a decent spell with, uh, you know, melee characters like an assassin or a knight, you know. Anything that is very melee and just spams attack next to the opponent is, is really good with this spell. Uh, this spell, I don't know. This is one of the weaker ones in my opinion. Uh, Damage-wise, it's pretty decent, like 160, 160, 145, like almost 150, like uh, comparatively to the other spells, this is pretty decent, like you can easily channel a bunch of damage through this, and it can also happen through walls, right? 
So if an opponent is, for example, if this is a wall and an opponent is behind the wall, you can just do this and uh, they will get hit. So it's not really relevant with the mage because the mage already has an attack behind to attack behind the opponents, you know, with this spell. But um, other classes might actually use this, you know, to cheese some opponents behind walls and stuff. So uh, pretty decent spells, both of them. Uh, this for melee, this for cheese, but uh, still there are betters. Anyway, uh, that is it for these two spells. Off to the next ones. And the next spells are the Magma Balls and also Freezing. So Magma Balls is this. Uh, now this spell does, you know, if you're very close to opponent, you can strike them three times. Like if you're below them, you can do like this and it hits them right away three times. At 200 something damage, not really that crazy, but it is decent. Like 600 damage from below uh, means almost one strike from below. It's as if you're doing a normal attack, especially if you have more intelligence. Like comparatively to the other spells, it's pretty decent powerful. And it does a skill crit if it goes downward. Like if it if it goes down, will skid while falling. If it is falling instead of being from below, then it gets a free crit, which is, uh, I would say, a compensation price. At the end of the day, what you do actually want to achieve is hit all three on one enemy, or at least in general hit all three. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. And then the next spell is the freeze here. Uh, it pretty much only frees opponents. The added bonus is that if you attack anybody that has the freeze debuff, they will get skill crit. Uh, so, as you see, boom, skill crit. And the skill crit is actually the spell itself. Like, as you see, it's the spell that does the spell crit. It's not the, the, the attack itself. Actually, is that even true? Give me a sec. Can I make sure that I can only attack an opponent once? It's so sad that we are a mage and uh, we got this double strike going. Here, here we're not doing a double strike. So if you do this and then we wait our skill crit to go away and then we attack, it is a skill crit still. Now with the mage, it's pretty weird to do this because the mage always get a crit when he casts. But with other classes, uh, like if you're, for example, a warrior, you can do like boom and just literally attack him right away and it's going to be a freeze first, which does its own damage and then another skill crit followed after that, which uh, is pretty decent, but I would say not really crazy spell. The good thing is that this thing comes out really quickly and it also covers like a big um, area, but the also better thing is that it also destroys larger projectiles, which means that if anything is in the general vicinity in front of you, you're like boom and as you see like this, uh, look how far away this reaches this it reaches from about here which is a pretty big area to cover like you can do like boom and everything gets hit and all projectiles in front of you destroyed so if you're in a panic mode or if you're fighting a boss you're like boom boom you get your crit in you get your damage in you destroy all projectiles in front of you you're pretty decent i think the frost is actually a decent spell and uh yeah that's it pretty much so off to the next ones and the next spells are electric themed now, first of all, we got this thing, which is uh, pretty much what you see. It's just a strike from above. Uh, it, it does provide. It does not crit itself. Like it cannot skill crit, but it does provide you with a weakness on opponents. And weakness means that all of your attacks are skill crits. So this is pretty much a debuff attack. Like if an opponent is above you, or if it's like seemingly close to you. I mean, seemingly close does not work. But if an opponent is above you specifically, then you can just do it and then just spam attacks. Now for the bosses, a few bosses do jump above you, but not all of them do. Uh, most of them either fly or do jump above you. I think the only big exception would be Erod. The rest of the boss, as far as I know, do some kind of jump here or there. So you definitely can hit a few bosses with this. But most of the time, the bosses that do jumps, they also fall down. And when they fall down, you're most of the time trying to dodge whatever is coming on. Like they're jumping, they smash and, and like explosions appear over you or something weird. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's good for bosses. But overall, I, I don't really think that's a good spell. But still, it does uh, provide a, a crazy DPS boost. Now, the other uh, spell here, which um, is this one, the Tesla Spike. This one over here, after hitting a wall, it creates a storm that damages all enemies. So this has to hit a wall. As you see, it goes through opponents. It goes through everything pretty much. It has to hit a wall. But when it hits the wall, it creates this thing, uh, which just does damage. Right now, I can't really show you the damage because there is no wall here. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. Like, this is not a good spell. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's not. Like, you can use it to maybe snipe a corner or something. But, uh, I mean, there are better spells than this. And I would not really suggest using that. If you have the choice to not pick it up, don't pick it up. My opinion... And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it for these spells. Off to the next ones. Give me actually a sec for the mana to go away. Off to the next one. <laughs> and here we are back with the other, the next two spells. Uh, first spell we got here is the Poison Fungus. This thing, whoop, it just sh throws away opponents. You know, it does like, it throws away opponents. What? It, it shoots five projectiles and all of them apply Spore Burst. Spore Burst is this explosive thing. Now, uh, this thing doesn't do that much damage, as you see, 80, but then the explosion after that is almost, not almost, it's always guaranteed skill crit, and also, as you saw, the explosion can hit things around it, so if you hit, like, a bunch of opponents and they're all next to each other, 
you can get a good old chain reaction. This explodes into this and this explodes into that and all of them lose life. So this is a pretty powerful DPS oriented spell, especially for big rooms that have a bunch of opponents. But otherwise, it isn't really that good. For example, against bosses, maybe not the best spell. Uh, the next one we got here is the 8 ball. Uh, it just... It just does a bunch of damage, okay? After one bounce, the damage is octoplied. After two bounces, it's a skill crit. Uh, so, this is the one bounce. It does literally nothing. Uh, the second bounce, I'm not exactly sure I would, uh, how I would achieve it over here. But, uh, yeah, th that's pretty much how it would look like. Maybe if I get, like, a random orb shot. Yeah, th that's pretty much the octopul. The octopul damage that it said, right? It says after one bounce, it octopulled. So, first attack... 100, second attack, 800 something. Now the third attack, I, I don't know how I can get the two bounces and also hit, hit queen, but it's just gonna be a skill crit. I mean, it's not gonna do that much of a difference. Maybe if I shoot it from here, I don't know if I shoot it from here. I don't know exactly the corner, but uh, I mean, that is also the problem with this, right? It looks awesome as an idea, but this is the only thing you most of the time will achieve doing. Most of the time you'll ju just achieve doing a, a normal shot into a wall that just reverses into octopal damage, which is a lot, by the way. Like, it's only for 50 energy and you gain 800, again, 800 damage, which is pretty decent. But don't expect to get the skill crit if you're not a god like... Um, you know, I don't know, billiard player or something. Uh, in general, I don't really like the spell. It's it's very clunky. You, you're you attacking like one opponent and then you just uh, do this. Like you attack to the back and hope that the orb is at some point come arrive, right? Like you're fighting a lady queen over here and then you're like, okay, time to, 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 to throw a spell. And now it's hit it. Like, waiting, waiting, we're done. Like it's, oh, that, that was pretty much how much the skill crit would do. Like a thousand four hundred something would be the skill crit. Yeah, 1,455 would be the skill crit, which is insane. If you think about it, it's actually insane how much damage this thing does. But uh, once again, it has like a huge delay until it hits. So um, yeah, that's pretty much that for these spells. Uh, I don't like this. I like this. This is really good for a bunch of opponents. This, I don't know, man. It looks fancy. Uh, people feel good when they actually achieve a good crazy hit. But I, I wouldn't say that it's good because it's not reliable. So uh, off to the next spells. Next two spells, we got uh, the Poison Blob, which is this thing, which uh, just throws a Poison Blob, does a bunch of poison and, uh, poison and also applies poison to the opponents. Now, Poison starts critting after a duration, so if you see the Poison starts critting and you want to maintain the crits, just uh, refresh the Poison on the opponents, and it's just gonna crit again and again and again and again. And that's pretty much this, this like, this, that, that is what this is. Literally, that is what this spell is. It's just a poison bomb that does a bunch of damage through the act of poison, which is, in my opinion, pretty decent. It's pretty slow, but once again, it's pretty decent against bosses as you will have a consistent damage going. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Here, hold to aim, applies poison at the end. Poison has its own mechanics, which are not shown here, which is, as I said, after duration, it starts critting. And then the other one is Wind Wall, the most defensive spell in the game, and in my opinion, one of the better ones. Hold to aim, block large projectiles. So this is what it looks like. Okay, it is a slow moving projectile, but when an, a boss is over here just shooting a million projectiles, you're like, nope, and you straight up uh, block everything. That's what you, you that's what you do with this spell. When you see some crazy attack happening over at the other side, like the boss is somewhere off screen and just shoots a million things all the time, you're like, boop, and just like that, you pretty much block everything in front of you and you are in no danger whatsoever. This thing blocks everything. So it doesn't matter what the opponent throws to you, it's just gonna block it. It's gonna block yellow bullets, it's gonna block red, green, doesn't matter what the attack is. It's gonna shadow bullets, it's gonna block him. Is he gonna do like the whole pillar that goes towards you, you know, there is like a whole pillar attack that's uh, purple and just goes all towards you, you just do this and the whole pillar disappears, like no matter what is ha coming towards you, you just press this and it's over. So uh, yeah, pretty powerful spell in my opinion, not really that much damage wise, like a borderline doesn't do damage, but uh, still very useful. Anyway, off to the next two. Uh, I'm back with one spell this time because I wasn't lucky enough to gain two. I mean, slowly I will only showcase one at a time. So next spell here, we got the gravity beam, a massive beam that destroys large projectiles, which pretty much is everything. And the last ticks are skill crits. And uh, this weapon, I, I don't think it's a good spell, but let's look at it. Whoopa! Is it like, come here, come here? as you see, it does a thousand something damage if you get it all off. But honestly... Um, yeah, it's a very bad spell. Uh, you also can do it like mid-air. You can just freeze in mid-air and just shoot it, but you cannot jump. Uh, I, I think, you, yeah, you can dash to cancel it, but still, I think the best use of this weapon would be like, for example, once again, if the opponent is like over there and just shooting a million projectiles, you're like this, 
And that's it. You just block everything and just do a bit of damage while you just, uh, you know, counter whatever the boss is doing or whatever the opponents are doing. You're, you're just super safe. But if opponents are behind you or above you or literally here, like next to you, and you're doing this thing, oh, you're getting hit. Like, forget the defense that this thing provides. Uh, but still, it's fun. It looks awesome. Still, not really one of the better spells. At the end of the day, there are spells that do 1,000 damage uh, easier and also don't lock you down in place. So, um, yeah, like even the Flame Bellow, the one that, the, you know, the channel flame that we had it was doing similar damage without locking you down and also allowing you to move in general not really that much of a crazy spell but uh, yeah it is what it is anyway off to the next one and we're back with more bad spells more mediocre whatever uh, first of all we got the white star over here can damage yourself and always crit skills this is what it looks like explosion you know a thousand two hundred which is a very good spell actually whoop that was me walking into the explosion Literally how it would happen in the real life. Like, whoop, and boom, you lose like half your life plus. I'm not sure if you can even die in this area. I'm gonna test in a bit. Uh, now, the other spell, which is a bit better, Prismatic Spectrum, freezes, burns, and spur burst opponent. It looks like this. Freezing means that you're gonna crit, but you're not gonna get the skill crit. The game is gonna get the skill crit. I think that's a bit of a, 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 a miss on their part. Like, the freeze instantly gets popped by the burn. Like, the first burn pop, uh, the first burn tick is gonna skill crit the freeze away. And then, uh, then the spore burst pops, and then pretty much everything explodes. Like, boop. First crit, that was the first crit, and then all the spore bursts hit, and then the flame continues with its crits. Uh, this is a good spell. On average, this spell does a lot of damage, and it can easily hit, like, a big area. Like, from here, I will hit everything. I hit this, 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 this. I hit pretty much everything from the middle here. So, a pretty powerful spell, in my opinion. Although, it's pretty, you know, it, it freezes you in place, and you hope that nothing's gonna attack you. But if you get it off, everything's gonna freeze for a second, and then they might hit you the moment the first, the moment the freeze goes away, they might hit you. But after half a sec, as you see, the spore burst pops, and then, like, everything dies. Everything will die after five or six uh, spore bursts to destroy everything around you so it's a pretty good spell on clearing rooms but it's not good as defense because you might think oh i'm gonna freeze them but no they're not gonna freeze they're gonna unfreeze and hit you right away but if you are in a good position they will also die instantly so uh that's that let's see if you can actually die by explosion in uh, in this area i'm pretty sure you cannot i'm pretty sure we're gonna get frozen at one hp yep we are frozen at two hp i guess yeah, you cannot die. So, uh, yeah, let, let, let's go through. I think there is no other spell left. Let me actually go and check if there is another spell left. And if there isn't, I'm going to come back and do the outro. I, I will look it up. And, uh, yeah, coming back right up. And, yeah, there was one last spell left. This thing, Searing Shot. I, I, I don't think I showcased it. Uh, Hold to aim, passes through walls. That is the important part, that it passes through walls, as most of the things don't, actually. I mean, most of the things do, but whatever. And applies burns, and that's it. Like, literally, that's it. It just shows, throws that out. It does, like, almost no damage, 282, and then it just burns the opponents. Uh, and it's just range. I mean, that's it, pretty much. There is nothing else to so say. Other than the fact that it passes through opponents, uh, and you can apply, you know, do cheese with it, not really something to write home about. If anything, maybe even the 8-ball is better than this thing. Because, yes, you can easily target and attack through walls with this for a bit of cheese. But still, it doesn't really do anything. Like, would you have a spell just to do a bit of damage and burn? Ah, I don't know. I, I definitely wouldn't. And, um, yeah, I think that is it with the spells and the classes and pretty much everything. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, drop a like, subscribe the channel. Also, thanks for the Patreon and the membership supporters. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it once again. I hope you guys enjoyed and it was helpful. Thanks for watching and see you guys around.